College basketball has seen countless amounts of prolific scores over the years. However, each season, there's only one player that can claim the title as the nation's leading scorer. At face value, this is an incredible accomplishment that only the best players in the world are capable of doing. Yet, on the flip side, many critics claim points per game to be an overvalued stat, and isn't the best indicator for how good a player will translate to the NBA. And with me being the curious fella I am, I wanted to dive into this debate and put it to the test. By looking at college basketball's top scores from the last 10 seasons and analyzing how their careers turned out. If you enjoy this type of content and want to see more, be sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel for more sports content. Now without further ado, let's dive in. In the 2013 season, senior Creighton forward Doug McDermott led the nation in scoring at 26.7 points per game, and he was one of those players that would make that 26 points look absolutely effortless, being able to score at all three levels with a strong knack for finishing at the rim, proficiency in the mid-range, and smooth shooting stroke from behind the arc. And what made his scoring average even more impressive was that he did it on very efficient shooting numbers, shooting 52% from the field and 45% from three. After leading his team to the second round of the NCAA tournament, McDermott would go on to be selected 11th overall in the NBA draft by the Denver Nuggets and then immediately traded to the Chicago Bulls. Unfortunately for McDermott, the prolific scoring he showed in college never quite translated to the NBA, averaging only 9 points a game for his career. He's dealt with his fair share of injuries, which certainly hasn't helped, but I think even injuries aside, it's evident his lack of athleticism is really the main thing that holds him back, as he's not able to muscle his way or generate space as effectively as he could in college. Outside of the occasional splash game, he's for the most part pinholed himself into the role as exclusive a spot-up shooter for most teams, since three-point shooting is really the only part of his game that's been able to translate to the NBA. So overall, although he never quite lived up to his lottery pick expectations, he still made a pretty solid career for himself being a knockdown shooter off the bench. Up next, we have Eastern Washington guard Tyler Harvey who led the nation in scoring his junior year, averaging 23.1 points a game. Harvey was highly effective off the dribble, being able to string together moves to create space for pull-up jumpers in the mid-range, as well as from three. Another aspect of his game that made him extremely exciting to watch was his deep shooting range, being able to drain shots from way behind the arc. And as someone that took most of the shots for his team, and tough shots at that, he was actually pretty efficient as well, shooting 46% from the field and 43% from deep. He'd go on to lead his team to the NCAA tournament and following his junior season, he declared for the NBA draft, being selected 51st overall by the Orlando Magic. Surprisingly, he never actually suited up for an NBA game, being relegated to the G League following the Summer League, and then proceeding to play overseas the following season, where he's been playing ever since. In terms of why he never panned out in the NBA, I think it's in large part due to him not really having a set position, as he lacked the necessary size and athleticism to be a wing, yet didn't possess the skill set to be a true point guard. But despite never succeeding in the NBA, he's made managed to build a pretty nice career for himself overseas, being one of the most dominant and prolific scorers in all of the various leagues he's played in. Averaging the most points in the 2015 season was junior point guard from Howard, James Daniel III, who put up 27.1 points a game. Despite standing at only 5'10", what Daniel lacked in size, he made up for with incredible quickness, shifty ball handling, and knockdown shooting ability. And keep in mind, I think 5'10 might have been a bit generous for him, but he was just someone that knew how to get to his spots on the floor and create the separation he needed to get his shots off. Additionally, he was able to generate a lot of offense on the defensive end, forcing steals and beating everyone down the court on the fast break. Deciding to return for his senior year, Daniels would unfortunately miss most of the season due to injury before deciding to transfer to Tennessee for his final year of eligibility. While at Tennessee, he'd struggle quite a bit, only averaging 5 points a game while coming off the bench. He'd wind up going undrafted after many scouts dismissed him due to his height, and he'd sign with a professional team overseas. But that didn't last long as he'd be released from his contract just 10 days later. And based on my current research, it doesn't seem like he's currently playing any professional ball anywhere else. No. Averaging a whopping 30 points a game, college basketball's leading scorer in 2016 was Central Michigan's junior point guard Marcus Keene. Like the previous entry James Daniels, Keane was also a bit on the smaller end, standing at 5'11", and their playstyles were very similar as well, with Keane being a high-level ball handler and shooter. And despite taking over 21 shots a game, he was a pretty efficient offensive player, with shooting averages of 45% from the field and 37% from three. So he wasn't one of those guys that just chucked up shots. He was efficient and calculated, but was also capable of making the tough shots when he needed to. Following his junior season, Keane would declare for the NBA draft where he'd go undrafted, and shortly after proceeded to sign overseas in Italy, and for the years after would bounce between overseas and the G League. As of now, he's currently playing for the Beijing Ducks of the Chinese Basketball Association. 
Up next, we have a player that's likely a bit more recognizable, and that's Trey Young out of Oklahoma, who in his freshman season led the nation in scoring at 27.4 points a game. I'm sure most of us are probably already aware of Trey's game. He's an elite ball handler and shooter, being able to make shots from all over the court. He had some absolutely insane games in college, almost single-handedly leading his team to the NCAA tournament. After his freshman season, Young would declare for the draft and be selected with the fifth pick by the Dallas Mavericks and immediately traded to the Atlanta Hawks, where he since blossomed into a star player. He's a three-time All-Star and is averaging over 25 points a game for his career. I mean, ever since high school, Trey's always been one of those guys where you just knew that scoring was never going to be an issue. And his offensive game has lived up to the hype up through high school all the way to the NBA. And with him now entering his prime soon, I think the best of Trey is yet to come, and I'm very excited to see the numbers he puts up over the next few seasons. Continuing the string of point guards, the leading scorer for the 2018 season was Campbell senior Chris Clemens, averaging an absurd 30.1 points a game. Standing at only 5'9", Clemens is the shortest player on the list, yet impressively had the highest scoring average as well. Like the other short guards we've talked about so far, Clemens was able to generate his offense through his incredible quickness, ball handling, and shooting ability. But what I think makes Clemens stand out above the others is his insane leaping ability. Like, I really encourage you guys to go watch this man's highlights. He was throwing down some vicious dunks at only 5'9". After declaring for the draft following his senior year, Clemens would go undrafted but would be signed to the Houston Rockets G League affiliate, and eventually earned his way up to the main roster. And during the season when the Rockets dealt with injuries at the point guard spot, Clemens came in and played pretty well. Unfortunately, the following season, Clemens would tear his Achilles in the preseason and was never really able to make a full NBA comeback, only managing to make it on G League rosters. As of now, Clemens is playing professional ball overseas. In 2019, senior point guard Marcus Howard out of Marquette led the nation in scoring at 27.8 points a game. Marcus was a player that had always been a prolific scorer at the college level, as he averaged 25 points his junior year and 20 points as a sophomore. He was another one of those smaller guards that could break you down off the dribble, make incredibly tough shots, and he was a lights-out shooter from three with limitless range. Another aspect of his game that he really excelled at was driving to the basket and finishing through contact, which allowed him to rack up points at the free throw line as well. Being as he played at a more widely recognized basketball school in Marquette, Howard received much more media attention as compared to some of the smaller school guys that we've already talked about. This allowed him to really cement his reputation as a prolific scorer, as he produced in some big time games with the millions of eyes on him. Following his senior campaign, which would be cut short due to COVID, Howard would enter the NBA draft where he'd go on to be undrafted, and eventually picked up by the Denver Nuggets on a two-way deal. He'd spend two seasons with the Nuggets, getting sporadic playing time and having a couple decent scoring performances, but overall wasn't much of a contributor, averaging just three points a game during that time. He'd eventually sign a contract to play overseas in Spain, where he currently plays to this day. In a COVID-riddled 2020 season, the nation's leading scorer was yet another point guard, sophomore Max Abmus out of Oral Roberts, averaging 24.5 points a game. Many of you might remember him from his March Madness run that year in which he spearheaded Oral Roberts' Cinderella run to the Sweet 16. He was someone that wasn't afraid to take and make incredibly tough shots, and with half of his shot attempts being from three, including shots well behind NBA range, it's no wonder why the nation fell in love with his game. In addition to his shooting though, he was also skilled and quick enough to blow by you for drives or hit a pull-up mid-range jumper if you overcommitted to him at the three-point line, so he was much more than just a shooter. Abmus would go on to spend two more seasons at Oral Roberts, never quite matching his soft your production, but still putting up very respectable scoring numbers. This most recent season, he decided to transfer to Texas, where he'd continue his scoring prowess, averaging almost 17 points a game against top-notch competition. As things currently stand, he has one year of college eligibility left, and I haven't found any reports thus far of him declaring for the draft or entering the transfer portal. So barring any developments in the near future, it looks like Admus is going to run it back with the Longhorns next year for his final college season. Breaking the streak of point guards, we have senior shooting guard Peter Kiss out of Bryant, who led the nation in scoring in 2021 with 25.2 points a game. Kiss was a very versatile scorer, really excelling inside the arc by getting to his spots in the mid-range, strong and crafty drives to the basket, and also possessing nice touch around the rim. Although not being a consistent three-point shooter per se, he was still capable of hitting them, and in games where his threes were falling, he was nearly impossible to defend. He was known quite a bit for showboating and other antics, which led to him not really being liked by most people, but it couldn't be denied that the man could score. Despite being a prolific college scorer though, Kiss really didn't get too many NBA looks. Partly due to his antics I'm sure, but in large part due to his inconsistent perimeter shooting and average at best athleticism for NBA standards. After going undrafted, he'd go on to play professionally in Mexico before going overseas to play in Bulgaria, where he's currently still playing. 
Lastly, we have senior point guard Antoine Davis out of Detroit Mercy, who averaged 28.2 points a game in the 2022-2023 season. If you guys aren't familiar with this guy yet, you definitely need to do some reading up on him and watch his highlights, because believe it or not, he's one of the most productive players in the history of college basketball. He currently ranks number two on the all-time points list for Division I, and holds the record for most three-point baskets made in a college career. To put into perspective a little bit just how talented of a scorer this guy was, he averaged over 26 points a game as a true freshman. Now, I think it goes without saying that this guy was a very well-rounded scorer. To be number two on the all-time points list, you basically have no other choice. His strength obviously lies in his ability to hit shots from behind the arc, and he definitely shot them at a high clip at close to 12 attempts per game. But he's also very skilled off the dribble, being able to hit a variety of pull-up jumpers, step-backs, turnarounds, and basically every other shot you can think of. It's kind of crazy to me he never transferred out, but I mean, with the green light he had to do whatever he wanted and not get benched, I can kind of see how that would be pretty fun for him to stick around. But anyways, after his historic college career, Davis would wind up going undrafted, but would be signed by the Trailblazers G League affiliate, which is where he played this most recent season. So that was the last 10 leading scores in college basketball and how their careers turned out. Outside of Trey Young, most of them either washed out of the NBA or never even got a shot in the first place and are playing overseas. Overall, this just goes to show that there are so many other factors besides scoring that goes into what makes a good basketball player and a good NBA prospect. So while points per game can give some good insight into a player's offensive capabilities, it's definitely not a defining stat that determines who will be a good NBA player and who won't. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more sports content. We're on the road to 500 subs and you definitely want to be along for the ride. This is Heatcheck Production signing off. I hope you have a great rest of your day. I'm out.